You are not a mouflon. That is not a mouflon. Yes, that was not a mouflon. We don't have any little ones yet. My daughter's goats, though. She started having some last week. Matter of fact, I second time around I had to help. She had two coming at the same time, so it was like, let's hold on to one, push the other one in, and get them to come out that way. But uh, be another week, and we should have some. But between now and then, I want to talk to you a little about nutrition for these girls. Girls, anybody want an apple? Apple. Who wants an apple slice? Daphne. Come on, Daphne. Oh, here comes apple. Come on, girls. They do love their apples. And you know what? Right now, we're getting to that stage. They're eating a lot more. They need a lot more. And that's what we're going to discuss. So stick around. Come on, Daphne. You can do it. Come on. A little bit more. No. <laughs> Here you go, Hershey. Whoops, right there under the feeder again. Anyway, we'll talk about this nutrition. Stick with me. All right, let's discuss this nutrition. You know, I've got these sheep in two different groups. I got a group here that's just start next week lambing and may go for three or four after that. My other group's not till two or three months away. And there's a big difference in the nutritional needs and really what they're eating. I can really see it that I've separated them now. I mean, I put out some hay for this group here that's going to be in the next few weeks. And I mean, they're in there. They're just cleaning everything up. They're in there working hard, eating that hay after their grain. Now, the other group that's, say, three or four months off or two or three months off, they eat their grain. And then they'll go over and start eating their hay. But, eh, they don't get that interested. They eat a little. They walk away and they come back. Their needs aren't as great as the needs here because these guys are really growing lambs here at the tail end. That's the big growth that's coming that last five or six weeks on those lambs. So they need more feed, but I want to talk to you about pregnancy toxemia. All right? And that's going to go along with how much they're feeding right now, how much they need, how much feed they're getting, and different ways to look at this. So it's pregnancy toxemia, and the first thing I want to tell you right off the bat don't listen to the guy on the internet. Mm -mm. Talk to your vet. I'm going to bring up the subject. I'm going to give you the thing to think about it. But you go talk to your vet for the advice. You don't get advice from people on the internet. All right? Now, what is pregnancy toxemia? All right. So it's going to affect the you, And it's going to affect them. It's odd, but it's going to affect them in two ways. They're either too thin or they're too fat. You, you would think if it's too thin, it's one thing, but here it can be too fat or too thin. And I'll explain it first. Let's do the thin ones first. All right, I got a ewe that's too thin, and she really could have had needed some extra weight put on her. Right now, that last four, five, six weeks, everything is getting pumped in to the lamb inside that's growing. Now, if she's only got one in there, we might get by in this situation. But if she's got two, three, or four in there, Everything is getting pumped into those lambs to get them to grow. She's not getting anything. She's getting very little nutrition. It's all going here. She started out thin to begin with, and now at the end, everything's going to them. So they need more feed at that time to help cover for that. Now we'll take the other side of it. We're going to say she's too fat. Well, you think she's too fat. She's really fit. She's in good shape. We shouldn't have a problem. But as I said, she's too fat. I didn't say she was in good shape said she's too fat. Again, if she's only got one in there, eh, she'd probably get by with that and you might be all right. But if she's got two, three, or four, what happens in this situation is because she's too fat and because she's got two or three, four growing inside, she can't eat as much. She eats some hay or she gets some forage and she eats that and she feels full and she quits eating and she's not getting enough nutrition. All right, so this is where extra grain can come in at the end. This is where people say you might want to increase the grain levels for your sheep at the end because they can't take in as much, if they're fat, they can't take in as much forage or roughage in the hay to get enough nutrition, so the grain allows for that. And if she's thin, grain will give more energy than the forage will. So, but again, discuss with your vet, should you be increasing the grain levels? How much should you be? And everybody's going to get different, all right? Take a look here. I'm going to show you. 
I feed alfalfa hay. Look at the ground. Look at the, the ground out here. Look at all those stems. Look at the pile. I got a pile there. I got all these stems on the ground. I'm feeding alfalfa. So if there's all that out there, what are they getting? Let me show you. What they're getting is the leaves. They're getting all the leaves and they're leaving the stems. All right? So in this situation, let's say we're talking about that you that's too fat. I got one person feeding grass hay. A lot of roughage. They're eating the grass and they're doing well. All right? The next person's me. I'm feeding alfalfa. But they're basically just getting the leaves. They're not getting the stems. Do I actually give a little less grain than the guy that's feeding grass hay? Because the leaves have all the protein, all the nutrients in them instead of the stems. So are my sheep getting a little better because they're eating just the leaves? They're actually able to get more out of the forage they're putting in. The, the, the leaves from the alfalfa are giving them a lot more than the grass would from the sheep that's eating the grass hay. Does mine need less grain then? Talk to your vet. All comes back to the one thing, doesn't it? <laughs> Talk to your vet, but that's the person you should be discussing this with. And the only thing I'm here for, the only thing I want to discuss with you is pregnancy toxemia so you even know it exists. It gives you, some, it gives you something to worry about again, doesn't it? Yeah, you thought things were all nice and simple and all of a sudden I gave you something to worry about. But every place is different. Every situation is different. And that's why you need to discuss it with your own vet. Take again, in my case, I, we could have somebody here that's feeding alfalfa just like me and feeding grain just like me. But I also put out lick tubs. I have high protein lick tubs and these sheep spend a lot of time at those lick tubs. Well, if the other person doesn't have lick tubs, again, it's totally different. The needs for the sheep are probably going to be totally different from that person and me. And when you go on the internet and you read, and I read a lot about this, I've been reading, I read a big article from Colorado State University, and here they're suggesting, well, you can feed them like this much grain in a day. But I thought, okay, what sheep is that? I mean, I have mouflons, and they're noted as the smallest sheep around. My black bellies are a little bigger. My son-in-law's Texas dolls seem to be even bigger yet. And many of your wool sheep and your other hair sheep breeds that are designed for meat sheep are even bigger yet. So if that article I'm reading from Colorado State suggests, well, I'll give them a pound a day. Well, if that's good for that sheep, what about this sheep? Again, every place is different. Talk to your vet. So all I really want to get down to is pregnancy, toxemia. Think about it. Hopefully next week, one of these days, I'm going to have babies to show you. All right. Thanks for sticking with me. Subscribe to the channel if you would. Hope to see you again real soon.